Joining us now, retired Navy Admiral William McRaven. He's the author of the new book, The Wisdom of the Bullfrog, Leadership Made Simple But Not Easy. Bullfrog is an honorific title given to the Navy SEAL who has served the longest amount of time on active duty. Admiral McRaven was honored with the title in 2011 when he had 34 years of service in the SEALs and took over Special Operations Command. Admiral, it's always great to see you. Yeah, Thanks for be being here. back Thanks. with us, sir. Uh, so tell us about the title, The Wisdom <laughs> of the Bullfrog. It hooked me in right away. I had to know what wisdom a bullfrog had. Well, you know, as, as you mentioned, the bullfrog is the title given to the longest serving uh, Navy SEAL on active duty. But remember, as Navy SEALs, we are first and foremost Navy frogmen. Right. from our World War II roots. So right. when you're the longest serving frogman, you are the bullfrog. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so what, what should, how do you apply the wisdom of a bullfrog, right. a man like you who has accomplished so much in his personal and professional life, what can the rest of us take away from the bullfrog? Yeah, so the, I, I lay out about 18 lessons and they are kind of mottos and creeds that uh, the military has used for thousands of years that really kind of help guide leaders during challenging times. You know. We've got a, a saying in the SEALs, uh, the only easy day was yesterday. And the point being, look, all your days are going to be hard as a leader. So when you come in to work, whether you're working at a hamburger joint or whether you're the CEO, you got to bring it. It's going to be hard today, but that's what's expected of leaders is to do the hard work. Mike? You know, Admiral, courage, honor, these are all important right. qualities in anyone, certainly in the Navy SEAL. But could you speak to the basis of all of this character? Yeah. The importance of character. Well, as you know, it is the first chapter in the book. And, and I've always said, look, there, there are a lot of you know, captains of industry who have made billions of dollars and changed the world. But at the end of the day, the rank and file are looking for leaders with character, leaders that, that are trustworthy, that are honest, that respect people. That is the foundation of every great leader I have ever worked with. Now, we're all human. We all have our foibles. We all make our mistakes. But at the end of the day, you know, the person you work for needs to be trustworthy. Or do you trust them with your money? Do you trust them with your life? Do you trust them with your job? So this sense of trustworthiness and, and again, fairness and respect and honesty, absolutely crucial. Admiral, it seems like today we're running deficits in leadership. So this book is desperately needed. Explain to me this chapter. Shepherds should smell like they <laughs> should smell like the sheep. Yeah, this Help is me a, with that. Uh, this is actually one of the few quotes that isn't uh, a military quote, and it's from Pope Francis when he said, "A shepherd should smell like his sheep." And the implication is, if you're a leader, you need to be out with the men and women that you are leading. You need to be on the factory line. You need to be in their cubicles. You need to be, you know, in the foxhole, so to speak. You need to smell like the people that you're leading, or you will have a tough time making the right decisions on their behalf. So get out of your office, get around to the men and women that, uh, that you work for and that you serve, and, and you'll be a much better leader. So, Admiral, you write about risks in this book. Yeah. The calculated risk, right. and you, in terms of the Bin Laden raid, which you orchestrated with the help of, of some of the other Navy SEALs and special operations guys, and you talk about being prepared for a risk. This isn't shooting from the hip risk. This is a calculated <laughs> and prepared risk. Yeah, I think what people miss is when you see the movies about Navy SEALs or special operations, you only see the sexy part. What you don't see is that three quarters of our time is spent planning and rehearsing. So yes, the mission is going to have risk. Everything in life that you're doing that is a great leap forward is going to have risk, but you need to, you know, reduce that risk to a manageable level by planning, by preparing. Uh, that's what you have to do if you want to be successful. A lot of whiteboard risk. A lot of before whiteboard those, risk. Before right. those Navy SEALs right. went in. Joe, I was joking with the Admiral when he sat down. Uh, his best-selling book, Make Your Bed, which says start the day by accomplishing a small task, has been very useful yes. when you have a 13-year-old <laughs> son and you say, the guy who got bin Laden wants you to make your bed. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It listen. certainly is. And I had a chance. I was so taken by that book. I had a chance after reading it uh, to talk to the admiral. And he reminded me, uh, he said, well, you know, we, we met uh, back in 2000 right. when you were a member of Congress. And I was escorting you uh, around uh, Coronado. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did, was I OK? <laughs> you were great. <laughs> he, he, he said I did not embarrass myself. So yeah. that was good. Um, so there's a line uh, from a recent interview, and uh, I, I, I relate to it very well. And I know Mika said I. she did too. Yeah. 
I was never the smartest guy in the room, <laughs> so it was easy for me to write this book on leadership from that point of view. And you know, it's so interesting. Um, rarely the people that rise are the smartest people in the room. And I'm just wondering what you've seen, what this book tells us about what separates out the leaders, even if they aren't the smartest, even if they aren't the right. fastest, the swiftest, the tallest, the strongest. You, you wrote about this some, of course, about uh, about some guys getting through the sales training camp and, and make your bed. Uh, and sometimes it wasn't the swiftest or the fastest or the strongest. What what separates the leaders from the rest of the pack, including the smartest guys and women in the room? Well, uh, Joe, to your point, uh, I mean, it helps to be the smartest man or woman in the room, but th that was never the case with me. So, you know, what you hope as a leader is that you are a servant leader. I mean, at the end of the day, your job as a leader is to make sure that the men and women that are working for you have the right resources, the right training, and you give them the latitude to do the job. But then you have to hold them accountable. But as a leader, as was mentioned earlier, the first and, and foremost quality you need to have is you know honesty and integrity and and this sense of trustworthiness but the other thing i would offer is hard work nothing makes up for whatever shortfalls you might have better than hard work come in early work long days stay late come in on the weekend do whatever you have to do in order to make your team successful because as a leader it's never really about you it's about the team that accomplishes the task